Hey everybody, welcome to Microbiome's lesson 2.4, analyzing experiments with mice, those poor little mice. We're gonna give them some digestive uh, issues. Hey, uh, let's first jump to the warm up because that's always where we start. Um, wait for it, ah, students observe data about patient 23 during weeks five and seven after he took antibiotics and record their observations. Okay, so let's take a look at some data. Oh, it says your teacher is projecting pie charts. Hey, I don't see any pie charts. Where's these pie charts? Uh, about patient 23 during week five and seven of the case study using the gut bacteria key, determine which new type of bacteria has been introduced to patient 23's gut bio, microbiome. Then answer the following questions below. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture. Wow, it's getting windy. It's so windy. Um, here's the uh, here's the pie charts right here. Ah, okay. So week five. All right, I see this light blue, darker blue, a pinkish, purple, gray. Cool. Um, and what you can do is you can actually read what each of these bacteria are down here in the key. Um, I won't move my mouse because then it'll bring up that up seat. There it is. Um, but over here in week seven, oh man, it looks like, okay, got that one, that one, that one, that one. Whoa, what is this red thing? Um, it was nice of them to make it red because it stands out, doesn't it? Um, well, what is this? What is, oh, wait, let's look at our, let's get our key down here. Uh, oh, here it is, that one, the red one, C. difficile, C. difficile bacteria. Oh, dear me. So, which new type of bacteria was introduced to patient 23's gut microbiome? Hey, I just gave you an answer to that one. Now, how about this though? What effect do you think this new bacteria will have on patient 23's overall health? Well, did we see any data in a patient's feeling well, patient reports, oh, stomach pains, diarrhea, bloating? That sounds uncomfortable. No, thank you. Uh, well, Go ahead and write down what you think it's going to uh, do to patient 23, and we'll come back to that. So go ahead and hit pause and do that right now. Hey, thanks for coming back. Let's take a look at this slide. It says, in week seven, the patient was feeling sick, and there's a new type of bacteria in his gut that was not there before. So we are drawing a connection uh, between the patient's condition and this new bacteria that we have discovered in his gut. Let's go back to our chapter two question which is this kind of weird thing, how can fecal transplants cure patients infected with harmful bacteria? Mr. Wigan, I, I think it's just gonna introduce more bad bacteria. Well, I don't, I don't know, let's, let, let's find out, let's keep going. Hey, here's a key concept for us. Antibiotics reduce the number of helpful and harmful bacteria in the microbiome. We've talked about this before, how um, a lot of our antibiotics, they're just targeting everything. They're not targeting one specific type of bacteria. They're just killing it all. Um, and so do they get rid of the harmful bacteria? Yeah, they do. And that's good. We want to get rid of that harmful bacteria. They're also getting rid of that good bacteria, which we're going to have to solve this problem. Uh, so let's investigate this question. Here's our investigation question for today. How can having fewer than normal bacteria in the gut microbiome affect the overall health of the body? Because if you go back, ooh, let's take a look. In week five, patient 23, okay, he was doing fine. Patient is feeling well again. How much gut bacteria did he have? Well, it looks like less than a quarter of what he initially started off with. So it seems like it's not just the fact that he has less bacteria, but something else is going on. So let's talk about these mice, these poor little mice. An experiment with mice can help us learn more about the microbiome and in organisms health. First, let's compare healthy gut microbiomes on a mouse and a human, and a human. So let's see, let me pull up our chart here. Nice. Uh, what does it want you to do? It wants you to discuss the similarities and differences between the healthy gut microbiomes of the mouse and human. So you can actually click on number two in Amplify and you can see these pie charts right here. So I want you to do just that. Uh, talk about the differences and the similarities between the mouse and the human. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once you do that, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at this experiment that happens with these mice. So do that right now. Go check out the similarities and differences. Welcome back. So let's take a look at this experiment. Scientists wanted to know what would happen. Um, right here, here it is. Uh, 
wondered whether a low bacteria gut microbiome made mice more vulnerable to a salmonella infection. They ran an experiment on 40 lab mice. Let's take a look at this. So we have group one. The, these are mice that had a normal gut microbiome like we just saw. Group two, they had a reduced gut microbiome. Now, like we saw with patient 23, you can be just fine if you have a lower amount of bacteria in your gut. Um, your gut can still work mostly the same. What did they actually do? They gave these mice salmonella bacteria. They ingested it. Have you heard of salmonella before? Most commonly you hear about it as being um, a bacteria that might live on raw chicken, which is why you need to cook your chicken real well. They gave these mice the same amount of bacteria. Now, don't get confused. A lot of students get confused here. They think this is a before and this is an after. No, these are just two different groups of mice. These mice have a full gut microbiome. These mice don't. They give these mice salmonella bacteria. They give these mice salmonella bacteria. And we're going to see what happens. Actually, it tells us the test results right there. Uh, but what are we actually supposed to do here? We already talked about that. I described how they had different mi gut microbiomes. Let's look at the test results. Both group of those groups of mice were healthy at the start of the experiment. Then both groups ingested harmful salmonella bacteria. We will study the data to find out what happened. And what you're going to do is you're going to annotate the data. So let's look at the test results right here. This is our normal gut microbiome. Five mice are unaffected and remain healthy. Well, good for them. Salmonella didn't do anything to them. 12 of these poor little suckers, well, they get slightly sick from the salmonella infection. Okay, slightly sick. Uh, I've been slightly sick before. It wasn't nice. I didn't like it, but, you know, I got over it. It was fine. Uh, three get really sick from the salmonella infection. All right, though, sorry, sorry, little mice. Uh, you really got it, got it bad. Now, let's look at these mice over here. They got the same amount of salmonella. But what happens to these mice? 20 get really sick from salmonella infection. Every single one of these mice uh, with a lower gut microbiome, a smaller gut microbiome, uh, they got sick. Every single one of them, very sick, compared to only three getting really sick over here. 12 got slightly sick, but five of these mice, they didn't get sick at all. What I want you to do is I want you to annotate this data. Mr. Reagan, how do I do that? I'm so glad you asked. <clears throat> You're gonna click this little plus sign here. What do you know? You can write in there, uh, 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 more mice got really sick. How about that? That's a great annotation. And I can move it right there. Boom, more, oh, I wish it would go to the other side, but that's fine. How about down there? There we go, there we go more mice got really sick. Hey, if you decide, oh wait, I messed up, I don't like my annotation, you can always click the trash button and delete it. What I want you to do is annotate this. Don't forget, after you annotate the data and highlight things that you think are important, click hand in. Don't forget to click hand in or else I will not see that you finished the assignment. All right, do that and come back to me. Well, now we're supposed to discuss our annotations. We will do that when we meet together as a class. Again, I wanna hear what you came up with. Next, in activity three, reading about bacteria. You're gonna read about a particular type of bacteria. Um, now this says right here, first, before we get into that reading, what questions do you have about the data from the experiment that you read about, the mice experiment? Do you have any questions about it? Um, for instance, did any of the mice have any other conditions that we should know about? Hey, that's a good question. Um, were all of the mice the same age? Were all of the, oh man, I'm coming up with a lot of good questions here. Uh, do you have any questions though? Um, maybe it was about the mice, maybe it was about the bacteria, um, whatever it is. But think about some questions and uh, yeah, bring them back to when we meet together as a class. So you're gonna read part of an article. You don't even have to read the whole thing. And what do you know? It's about salmonella bacteria, the one that the mice just ate. Uh, we're only gonna read the environment section. So lucky you, you don't have to read the entire thing yet. Um, just the environment section. As you read, here's what I want you to think about. Uh, how do salmonella bacteria in the gut microbiome affect the body? So what do they do once they get into the gut? And why were the low-level mice in the experiment more likely 
to get the salmonella bacteria infection because that's what we notice. The ones with the, um, the lower amount of bacteria in total, it seemed like they got the infection more, right? I mean, that's just what the data tells us. So don't forget to do your active reading and go ahead and read that right now. Please don't forget to annotate uh, your article. Um, and then once you annotate it, make sure you hand it in as well. So go ahead, read that, annotate it, come on back. Thanks for coming back. Uh, so here's our questions that I want to talk with you uh, when we meet together as a class. How do salmonella bacteria in the gut microbiome affect the body? And then why, again, this question, why were the low bacteria mice more likely to get the salmonella infection? Because we think this is going to lead us to some conclusions about patient 23. So key concept number 10, living things with fewer than normal helpful bacteria in their guts can become infected more easily because here's why. There's more food and space available for harmful bacteria. All those bacteria left, and they were all eating food in your gut, well now there's space for new bacteria to come on in. Uh, there's food for new bacteria to come on in and go ahead and eat. Hey, sometimes, just because someone might take antibiotics doesn't necessarily mean that they're automatically gonna get an infection of some harmful bacteria. The regular healthy bacteria could also come back and fill in those gaps again. And they could eat the food and they could fill in the space, um, but it does leave that person susceptible for an infection. Let me go back and edit out that last part. Um, so what evidence do we have to support that claim? The claim that living things with fewer than normal healthful bacteria in their guts can become infected more easily because there's more food and space available for harmful bacteria. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what evidence do we have? What? Ev oh my gosh, the mice, right? The experiment that we just saw with the mice, the mice with lower than normal gut bacteria got that infection. Okay, so let's talk about number four, activity number four. Let's apply this new understanding to patient 23. Since mice and humans have similar gut microbiomes, we looked at this at the very beginning of the lesson. We said, oh yeah, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. We can use what we learned from the mice to help explain what might be happening to patient 23. It's similar, and we're not going to automatically say this is exactly what's happening, but it might help us to understand what's happening, right? So what happened during week five for patient 23? Pa uh, patient 23 was treated with antibiotics. His gut microbiome shrank by over 75% total, all right? What happened during week seven? During week seven, we got an infection, okay? We got this infection of C. difficile bacteria. Um, patient 23 is not happy. Patient 23 is having a bad, bad couple of weeks here, all right? So with our bacteria, uh, salmonella bacteria experiment, we tested mice with a full gut microbiome. We tested mice with a low gut microbiome. Here's what I want you to do. Given the evidence from the experiment and the article and anything from the case study, uh, I want you to discuss, discuss, uh, think about what, how can we relate what's going on with the, the mice and the article to patient 23's case. Um, let's go ahead and click on, oh wow, I totally skipped number three there. Let's go ahead and go all the way to number four because I don't think there's anything for you to actually write down in here, but I do want you to think about that question. Um, and hey, check out these sentence starters right here. Those are always helpful. Patient 23 got a C. difficile infection after his treatment with antibiotics because uh, the evidence that supports my idea is, ooh, that's good. I like that part. The evidence that supports my idea. Make sure you cite your evidence. Okay, go ahead, think about that. Maybe use those sentence starters and then come back to me. Last thing is the homework, but it's all homework, right? Uh, for uh, activity number five, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be reading about this nasty little C. difficile bacteria uh, that is infecting 
uh, patient 23. So we're going to read about this and see if, I don't know, maybe this bacteria, maybe we learn something about uh, how this bacteria affects the gut microbiome of a human or the digestive tract of a human. Um, and maybe we'll get some information that can help explain what is going on with patient 23. So read this article, annotate this article. After you finish annotating this article, make sure you hit hand in so I can see that you did it. And uh, then you're done. We'll see you next time.